I've been using the Sony DSC HX 400V as my walk around camera for nature photography for a little over a year now. In that time, I've learned exactly what it can and can't do, so I thought I might do a review of the camera to share what I've learned and to show some examples of the kinds of photographs you can get with this camera. I bought the camera mostly for its lens. It's a Carl Zeiss 24 to 1200 optical zoom. You can further enhance that long end of the zoom by using the clear image zoom, which is a Sony proprietary um, application that allows you to double the length of the zoom to 2400. With that, you can get close to just about anything you need to get close to with little loss of quality. You can shoot the moon, you can shoot animals without getting too close if you don't want to get close to dangerous animals. You can shoot small insects from a fairly close distance with that huge zoom and get some fairly good macro photography out of it. Of course, on the shorter end, you can shoot landscapes and people if you wish, but I want to avoid uh, photographing people. I just like to photograph nature. In any case, in this video, I'd like to show you some examples of the photos that I've gotten over the last year and tell you about the settings I've used to get those photos. So, if you hang on, We'll get started. As with all nature photography, you have to make adjustments on the fly. I like to use the mode dial. I'm not averse to using the program setting as long as I have the other settings for vivid and cloudy and the DRO set properly. Uh, it allows me to take a photo quickly, especially if I use the auto ISO. Now, if I want to use a lands or take a landscape photo, I will use aperture priority uh, and go up to F8. That's the highest this camera goes, the narrowest aperture to give you the most depth of field. So I will use that. Another good thing about this camera is you can get an F2.8 out of the short end of the lens so that if you want to do photographs with a soft background and just the foreground in um, focus you can do that and get a nice effect out of that. For the shutter speed I usually keep that at around a thousandth of a second in case I see a quick moving animal or a bird in flight. The manual I don't use the manual a whole lot unless I have plenty of time to set up the shot. Then it proves useful. You cannot use ISO auto in manual, so you have to be spot on with your shutter speed and your f-stop to use that. There are several aspect ratios you can use on this camera. I like to use the 3-2 aspect ratio because I believe Sony made the software to be shot with a 3-2 sensor. That's how it is on their professional cameras. So on this bridge camera I try to use that. I'll use the fine quality and I'll use a vivid setting. I like to use ISO Auto. It's an automatic setting that I think gives good results. Now I don't want to go too high on the ISO. I might uh, go up to 640 ISO at tops, but this camera is best when you have bright light so that you don't have to use the high ISO ratings. Now, 
I like the cloudy setting because that will soften up your pictures, give you a little more orange in the photos, and make them a little dreamier. This is an interesting setting, the DRO. Now, I'll use the highest setting I can on that, the uh, DRO LV5. That evens out the contrast and the uh, brightness of the photo. So you don't get a lot of nasty shadows and weird contrast. Now, on creative style, I like to use Vivid. Now that you've seen some of my settings and how I use the mode dial to adjust to different situations, let's look at some of the photos I've got. I like birds. That's one of the reasons I got this camera, because of the long zoom. On all the photos I'm about to show, I'll show you the ISO, the shutter speed, and the f-stop so that you could get an idea of how they were taken. Again, I used mostly vivid settings with ISO Auto, the DRO set at 5 to even out the contrast and brightness. And with those, you can get some pretty dreamy results. So let's take a look and let me know what you think. The next few photos will demonstrate that we are really are headed to crazy town with the 2400 millimeter zoom. These photos were shot mostly in a bird blind uh, where it's a little bit easier to get close to the birds. But with this zoom, Sometimes you can get photos of birds that are just a little more cooperative. So let's take a look at these photos and see the excellent results you can get with the clear image zoom set at 2400 millimeters. Another way you could use the 2400 millimeter clear image zoom is with flowers. The OSS or optical stabilization works very well on this camera and it helps with both birds and flowers and just about anything else you can shoot with the camera. But as you'll see from the flower photos you can get some very good results either handheld or using a tripod and that big zoom for your nature photography. With the next set of photos, you'll get an idea of just what the Sony DSC HX 400V can do while photographing animals with that monster zoom of 2400 millimeters on clear image. They'll be both large and small animals, and you'll see what you can do. Again, all of this is handheld, so the optical stabilization really makes a big difference in getting you these clear shots.
We've seen what the camera can do at the long end of the zoom, and now we're going to see some examples of what it does at the short end of the zoom. Again, these photographs profit from using the vivid setting and the DRO setting set at five. So let's take a look at how landscapes are done by the Sony DSC HX 400V. Well, I've got my hat on, which means it's time to go out again this evening and shoot some photographs. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something from it. To sum up, the Sony DSC-HX400V bridge camera is an excellent camera for all uses if you want to carry just one camera. You can shoot a myriad of different types of photographs with it and you can get some pretty good results. On the negative end it's got a small sensor so you're not going to get 20 by 30 prints. Uh, sometimes the zoom is a little bit slow and it also does not have a buffer which means the 10 frame per second rate that you can shoot at which is extremely helpful in all situations has to write to the card before you can use the zoom again or the camera again. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the photos and I hope you have a better idea of whether or not this camera is for you.